Hey guys, Steve from Mid Masters here, and today I'm showing you how to replace your radius arm bushing. This is your radius arm right here, and right where it stabs into the frame is this bushing. And when they go, you get a clunk and all kinds of noises and stuff. Mine aren't bad. Uh, I just want to replace them so that all the bushings on the truck are new. And as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of these Prothane bushings. They're literally indestructible. I'll be in the grave by the time these things decide to start falling apart. So here we're going to take this thing apart. So we're going to start this off by saying you must be able to bust this nut right there off before you can start this repair. As of right now, it's it's gonna come off, and I know that because yesterday I took an entire hour loosening both sides of the truck. So I know they'll come off without any trouble. I did that, I think mostly because I have this Milwaukee Fuel brushless impact gun. The thing is a beast, especially when you put one of the bigger batteries on that they have. That thing says it has 1,400 pounds of torque. When you read the directions, it's like 1,800 to 21 if you put a really big battery on there. So if you're gonna do this, unless you've got a lift and like a, a huge breaker bar, my gosh, I just don't know how you'll get it off. So before you do this, please make sure you have some muscle, an impact gun, a long breaker bar, something. I was heating it up and cooling it down, trying to loosen it up and you know, it finally gave way. So patience and persistence is gonna win out. Once you have that nut off, everything else is a piece of cake. So. Let's get started. So to make this thing quick and easy, you're gonna to wanna to remove uh, this bolt that holds the top of your coil spring and you're gonna run the, boot, the bolt from the top of your shock. Some guys like to take both these out. Why do all that work? So I actually just leave the coil spring in there. I leave the shock in there. I just undo the top so this thing can sag. So I'm gonna undo those two and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I uh, remove the bolt here and the bolt up top here on the shock. Got them right there. Now, it hasn't drooped because right now I have it supported by my jack. You wanna do that so this thing just doesn't fall. Cause really that's the only thing that's keeping this up in the air aside from the actual radius arm bolt. So speaking of that bolt, the next step is to undo that. Now, I was able to do this with a one and one eighth bolt. There you go. Put it right side up there, Stevie. And uh, you don't need to use a deep socket. I just, this is just the socket I have lying around because believe it or not, it's the same size bolt as right there. So just in case you don't have one of these, you need a one and one eighth. I put multiple extensions on my gun just to have it far enough out where I have room with the gun. That can vary with whatever your setup is. But I'm gonna take this nut off and that will be loose and we'll go on to the next step. So here we are, we have the radius arm nut off and it's a nut washer bushing and this spacer. Now on the other side, this spacer had cracked and was broken. Uh, this side they must have changed because this thing just looks a little better. Um, although it could be all original and this side just didn't get that much wear. So this is what the end looks like. As you can see, it stabs right through the bracket here and the nut goes on there. Now there is another method to doing this uh, that you could literally do right now. and. Some of these hangers are only bolted on. As you can see, there's one bolt there, but as there's other places where you can see those rivets, some of them have been replaced and they're bolted on everywhere. And all you actually have to do is un you'd undo the bolts and slide the bracket off, and that would give you access to the radius arm. So that option is still there. Clearly, I don't have that option. So I'm showing you guys the long and more common way of doing this. So now the next step is we're gonna climb under here and Way back there, you're gonna see that is the axle pivot bushing, okay? And of course, the nut attached to it. That needs to come off because this end needs to drop. Once that drops, this will drop down and we'll be able to move it over and of course, pull that out. Now, other guys, again, have their ways. They remove the brake caliper because they don't want any stress on this. But as long as you have this supported, you can let this down just enough so you don't have to undo your brakes, you don't have to take your caliper off, you don't have to do all that extra stuff. So the next step is take that axle pivot pushing nut off and we're good to go. So here we are, 
The nut for the axle pivot bushing has been removed and the bolt pulled through. So that can hang down, so the whole thing can hang down. Once it happens, this thing just droops and you can pull it right out, no problem. So the next step is to put new bushings on this and put it all back together. So let's talk kits. So here's the bushing kit here. And so you have this first piece, as you can see right there, bushing, this washer, spacer, and then you have this back piece. So they all kind of go together like this. So I'm gonna stack them. So you have washer, this guy, spacer, this piece, that last washer, and then you, of course, your nut. And that's what it looks like. Now, I love prothane bushings. As you can, if you watch enough of my videos, you've seen me replace a lot of stuff with them. But they do not come with these other pieces, which is kind of a huge letdown because you'll actually end up spending double the money to have prothane because you have to order all other kit. So here's a uh, you know Moog kit here and it comes with the other bushings. And I ordered that because I needed this piece. So after test driving my truck and giving some thought, I don't think you actually need this plastic spacer. Unfortunately, the prothane bushings do not come with any instructions as to whether or not you really need to use this when using their bushings. So the choice is up to you. If you really want to use the plastic spacer, go for it. Otherwise, I think your truck would be just fine. I could reuse the old washers, simple enough. And if I'd known that piece was good, then I wouldn't have worried about this. But the other side needed this piece, so of course I had to go run out and get another kit. So keep in mind, if you want to go prothane, you will have to buy another kit so you can have some of these other pieces. Prothane, for some reason, likes only doing the rubber and leaves everything else up to you. Your choice. So, next step here is to reassemble uh, the bushings. But before we do it, this is going to have to be removed. This is a little tricky. This is actually a metal outer sleeve. And as far as I know, this nobody sells this piece. I've looked at so many aftermarket kits, and I think it's just something unique to uh, the OEM world. And I really haven't figured out a way to get it off. And there probably is. The other side, it was really, really messed up. So if you can salvage this and you want to put it back on, more power to you. Otherwise, as you can see, the inlet here is nice and flat. It's really not going to hurt anything. And I think that's why kits don't come with them. So if you don't mind butchering it to get it off, because it is actually molded to this piece. There's actually little holes. Uh, what I did is I actually cut the jacket with an angle grinder, peeled it off, and then I was actually able to turn this bushing and slide it right off. And then, of course, the washer comes off right with it. If it's really being tough, you can use some heat and you can heat up the rubber, you know, kind of set it on fire a little bit. I know, not in great environmentally, but it seems to be the only way to get it off because it, it weakens the rubber and pretty much loosens it up from the steel it's on. And then it comes right off. So I'm gonna get that all straightened out here and then uh, I'll walk you back through at least a few of the steps and then the rest is up to you. So here we are, I have my washer and I have my bushing on there. That white stuff is white lithium grease. I put it on there just so that the bushing itself is not riding up against the metal. And of course, the fact that it's rusted, I feel like it's just gonna add a little extra longevity there. Could be wrong, but when I've done prothane in the past, they usually give you some kind of grease. That way, you know, like when this moves, it doesn't make any noise, but the way this set up, I don't think it'd be an issue. So the next step is you're going to jack up your front suspension here. We're using your jack there and you're going to elevate this enough so you can stab it back in there. Once that is stabbed in there, leave it. Go under there and push your axle pivot bushing back up into the uh, place where it bolts up to. Put the bolt in there and we'll move on to the next step. You kind of have to do these. It's a little tricky, but you'll get it. But just remember, this end in first, then that end. If you do it in the reverse, you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to get it back together. All right guys, so here we are. The axle pivot nut is in place. And of course this end was stabbed in before I did that. So the next step is just reattach your spring with that mounting piece up top. Put your bolt on, your shock. And of course, if you need to learn how to do that, I have videos in the playlists, but you saw me how to do that earlier. The very last step is putting the nut on this. And just in case you didn't get the order earlier, it's this spacer goes on, then it's the bushing, then it's the washer, and then of course 
the nuts. Now, when I put this all together, I was just barely able to get those first few threads of the nut, um, but it was just enough. Put your gun, or if you're just ratcheting it, just get it really slowly. And when you've got it most of the way, thread it on there, then you can just send it home with all the torque you have and whatever you're using. So guys, that's all for me. If you want more information on how to do a shock, a coil spring, or an axle pivot bushing, check out some of the videos I have on there, or look through the F-150 playlist, just in case, of course, you thought uh, what I had here wasn't adequate enough. And then, of course, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe icon over here. You don't want to miss a single one of these videos because they really go a long way into helping restore your favorite F-150. So that's all for me, guys. Stevie from the Midmasters, thanks for watching.